Our guest today, Judy Mayo, is an advisory director for Argyle. She's been in-house for three different companies and done that law firm thing. Judy brings that in-house experience to help companies marry design and substance together, bringing a lot of passion, a lot of practical guidance to her work, as you'll soon find out. I'm Brock Romanek, today on Zippy Point. So Judy, the director of BIOS, I don't think there's any greater part of the proxy statement that's evolved more widely. I think in the old days, there was just the bare minimum that companies provided, but it's such an easier area to convince perhaps directors to do some proxy design. So more companies than not, I think have done some element of design with this area at least. Uh, but what are you seeing as the expert? Yeah, the, the bios have thankfully evolved over the last you know bunch of years. They are originally back 10, 15 years ago when there really wasn't a whole lot of proxy design. It was bare bones, let's disclose what the uh, regulations require us to. So it was last five years of experience, what they're doing now, um, age, things like that. So now what we're seeing uh, a lot more are bios that really tell the story of why this director is a director at the company, why this nominee is on the slate to be, uh, to be nominated as a director. So the whole point of design really is to, is to take the facts that you need to disclose and present it in a way that's clear and efficient, easily understood by the reader, but also tells the story that the company wants to tell. So in, in the bio design, for example, this is a great place to not just uh, uh, describe the, the occupation of the director, but also say, why are they ideal? Why are they ideal at this moment in time, not five years ago, but, but right now? So I could pull up a few examples and uh, show what I think are really great um, presentations of bios. We'll start here with Royal Gold. Royal Gold, the team is Alistair Baker um, and his team. They've done a great year. This was their, um, their last proxy statement. And what they've done here is in the bios, they have a photograph. I think the essential element for all bios are a photograph, um, as well as key facts about the director, what committees they sit on, their tenure, and here, on the left-hand column, you'll see there's the photograph. And the photograph is important because, first of all, it personalizes who the director is, as well as gives the reader an indication if they want to see how diverse the board is. Rather than uh, make any statements about uh, a, a director's diversity, they see a, a photograph if they're interested in, in, um, in gender or racial diversity. It's an easy way for them to see who these uh, folks are. So the key facts are there in the left-hand column. But what I really like about this bio is it cuts to the chase of why this director, and, and the bios are the same for each of the directors, why the directors are ideal for the company. It lists their qualifications and experience and also sets forth where they got that experience. So rather than your typical resume form of bio, this really just says, the, this is why this director is ideal. These are the qualifications that are so important for our company, and this is where they got it. Here on the left of the previous page uh, preceding all the biographies are the list of qualifications that Royal Gold has determined are really key for their board, their nominees to have. And you'll see that the icons are carried over to each of the biographies. So you have an icon there for board service in the list of desired attributes, the same icon is there. So that's another great visual way to tie the list of desired uh, qualifications to each of the uh, director's qualifications. In the proxy summary for Royal Gold, they also do some interesting and very good uh, a way to communicate key facts about the directors. These two directors are up for nomination, uh, were up for a nomination last year. And so here in the proxy summary, they again put out the, the photographs, and they give very key facts about who these directors are and why they are up for nomination. What is their experience and qualification that's so important for them to be on the board at this time in, in Royal Gold's um, uh, history? It sets forth why it's important for these nominees to be on the slate at this particular time uh, for Royal Gold, why their key skills and attributes are important now. And you'll see again that in the proxy summary, the icons that are going to be used later on flow through. So it's a nice visual type uh, later on in the document. 
Yeah, I love when companies have those icons and, and they pick icons that are specific to that company, that industry. It's, it's really nice. That's right. Yep. Uh, the next company I want to talk about is Mattel um, and the Mattel team, which is Robert, Lillian and Tiffany, they have redesigned their bios. Uh, they did not attempt to make each director's bio the same length. I know that some companies struggle with that. If director one has um, a lengthy biography because he or she has been uh, associated with a lot of companies versus another director who perhaps has been with uh, his or her particular company for 20 years and so their CV is not quite as long. They're not worrying about that. What they really wanted to stress is, again, they start with cutting to the chase. Why is this director a, an ideal director for Mattel at this point in time? What does he or she bring to the table that's important? Of course, they list their career highlights here. This is more the, the CV look. And on the left, they have the photograph and they have the key facts, their age, their tenure, their current committee memberships. And what they also do is they highlight the current public directorships uh, of each director. That's important because for, um, for companies, their institutional shareholders might be very, very keyed in on overboarding. Overboarding is an issue that's been getting more and more attention. And so this is a way to um, visually just pop out how many other public companies uh, the, the directors are involved with. The last example here is Hewlett Packard. Um, and the team at Hewlett Packard um, has, a, a, again, very nicely designed biography. You'll see that they set out the key facts about the directors on the, on the top and on the side, age, tenure, committees. Um, they also, in the blue box, so it's visually highlighted, they describe under I, other key qualifications why this director is ideal. They explain in the company's words why, you know, this example here, Ms. Alvarez, is uh, well suited to be on the board given the company's strategy and focus. You'll also see again that the icons for desired attributes are carried from the, the skills matrix into each individual biography. So there's a continuity, a visual continuity uh, in terms of skill sets. It's really fascinating how far director bios have come. As I said, it'll be interesting to see if we start seeing some video bios. I think for directors that they still far away, but for the rest of us uh, on our, our, our firm profiles, I think firm video bios will be the norm. I have made a video bio for myself and I've made a video about why well, you should have a video bio too. So you might want to check that out because I think it helps bring to life. Yeah, it's, it's important to be able to describe, especially for, uh, for incumbents who are being renominated, why are they still relevant now? Because company strategies can change, the economic climate changes, situations change, and the, the, the board needs to reflect that, that change, that evolution. And so not just for the new candidates, but as well as for the incumbents who are being renominated, the bios are really the place to describe their, how they're relevant now. Yeah, you can really tie together the board evaluation process and, and drafting mm -hmm. these by, you know, and tweaking, you want to have a director who's been on the board a long time and the, board, and the bios has said the same thing year after year. But like you said, the company's focus has changed, the strategy has changed. So how do you, you know, if the director does indeed still fit on the board, how do you explain that in the bio to shareholders? Very interesting. That's right. Thank you, Judy. Thank you.